Hello friends, so Landgraf just came out with this really cool update that actually will allow you to make the perfect workflow. So there's a difference between a workflow and an agent, and most people know Landgraf for building agents. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is, with this new update from them called Functional API, this allows you to build the, the best workflow ever, while using some of the cool stuff from Landgraf, like memory, snapshot, which is time travel, and a bunch of other things like easy streaming and stuff like that and interruption from uh, human in the loop. So what is it actually? Um, too long didn't read. This is basically means now you can use some of these features from LangGraph without having to write graphs. So the thing about LangGraph that kind of like makes it difficult for some people to pick up is because you get to th start thinking in, in like graphs. I like to write functions. I, I come from like a <laughs> full stack development React background. So I like to write functions for everything. I don't write, I don't like to write classes. I like to write functions. You gotta change a couple of things. Um, even though I think in the in press release it says that you can just use your existing code, but you gotta change a little bit of uh, how th how things work, how things are run, to adopt this. But I think it's worth it. I think it's it's really cool. It's going in the direction that I like. Um, before we do that, let's talk briefly about like workflows versus agent. What do I mean by workflows? What I mean is basically what most people are building. They think it's it's their agents, but they're actually workflows. If you go from one input and then you just go from like different like pipes and then you go out the other side, it's probably a workflow. If your pipes and run in parallel, that doesn't make it an agent. So, I personally use this a lot routing. So use function calling, receive an input, pass out like you know the right next step to do things. Again, some people call this a function. I mean, <laughs> an agent because it's calling functions, tool calling. It's a router. It's a workflow. Uh, you can even do like a infinite loop here of like use an LLM to generate something and then use an LLM to evaluate that and then pass it back and forth. Stir a, stir a workflow. So a workflow, at least in my head, is like something that you can just run to accomplish a task. An agent, on the other hand, looks much more simplistic in the diagram, but from my understanding, it's basically, okay, so you take actions, you take an, let an LM take action, usually through tools, but then there's all sorts of like multivariate kind of like feedback from the result of the tool, um, the next step that is baked into the planner or uh, from the LM, or some sort of like just very com vague and complex kind of like metadata that came out of like taking actions. And then I had to like think and take the next next action like a human. Here, this thing, its only job is to like, okay, query sounds like this, pass queries, goes to these uh these routes, pick the right route. And these things are very like very like you know, kind of like left to right, one one to one kind of like easy no, I wouldn't say easy, but like straightforward to implement. Agents are kind of like they need to get thrown into like more, you know, multivariate kind of uh, chaotic and um, uncertain environments to take actions and look at like the results. Um, the action could be multiple tools. I hope that makes some sense, at least from my understanding. But I'm talking about workflows today. And I built a lot of workflows that I thought were agents, but they're actually workflows. And this is very useful for workflows. So today you might be building a workflow that is just pure functions, right? You just pass you just pipe one result from one function to the next now you can do all that but with metadata that's the main point of a functional api um, when you start a task there's metadata there's a point in time that you can roll back to when you interrupt user there's a point in time that you can either roll back to or have metadata about what happened during that time and there are APIs from the LangGraph SDK that makes it really easy to for you to see it. So let me just show you. This is a workflow to basically take in a word, any word basically, and passes that to Gemini um, 2.0 flashlight, flashlight, and it passes it to this model and it generates like a one line of joke. That that's pretty much it. So I type in like bees. You know, give me like. Bees make honey, obviously. I don't know if that's a joke, but... So that's the first step of the workflow. The second step is, do I want to change this? 
I can say like make it more uh, serious or I can just type in yes and I'll just accept that so I want to say make it more serious and now it says uh, life ends death happens oh my god zero to a hundred real quick okay so that's all the, that's a lot of fun part the fun part is aggregated snapshots from state history so state history is available from like the land graph SDK API um, it basically saves all the steps of your workflow that's the point it saves every single step in your workflow so now you can see snapshot number one source start from a loop which means you know we just started the workflow that's why it's called loop uh, it's from like land graph documentation um, sometimes a little bit confusing to read but I know and I just told you and then snapshot number two is when it actually asks for my input from interrupt so interrupt is a method from the land graph SDK you can just import it like that and the reason why we want to use interrupt instead of just stop the flow and like ask for users input is because it comes with metadata metadata about like okay what's task was it interrupted in what what is the action so I'm going to show you what that's implemented it's implemented in the, this task right this workflow right here so it's like okay action please approve this blah 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 so now we have like a almost like a a broadcast like this this came from land graphs documentation it's like when we use the inter interrupt a uh, method it broadcasts it to the entire workflow or it used to be the, the entire graph network that it has been interrupted so right now the use case is very simple of like using input but like imagine if this was running on like an event driven kind of architecture in your system or maybe you have like your definition of interruption is not just like ask for users input but like ask for another agent's input or something like that it gets a little bit more complicated that's why if you use interrupt you get metadata you get broadcast through the entire network and everyone everyone in the network knows that this workflow right here has been interrupted right now and another thing to keep in mind is that this runs in the loop but we pass in a thread ID which we keeps the same the entire way through so I'm gonna show you one more thing so it now it's resetting the workflow um, and I can say something like uh, physics so that's my new word and then it's gonna write like a sentence and I can say it like yes cause it looks good you can see that the snapshots are you know continuous so you know, this is from like the first loop of the uh, workflow this is from the second loop but it says snapshots 3 snapshot 4 you can keep track of all this because it's part of the thread ID which is great because then your user can stop work using in your program they can pick it up back up a day later and as long as you have the thread ID safe not like in memory like this but like in your database you can just pass that in and then the user can just pick it back up right away but the reason why it is cool is because um, this is, this workflow is run from start from the, from the be beginning every single time the reason why it got to like this far in the future knowing that okay so after um, generating like the first sentence it should ask me for like my feedbacks is because we like land graph SDK API is keeping it the state and keeping track of like okay which 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 task we're on and when I say task I mean like basically step but you have to use this like decorator here which then turns your um, output type from like the type whatever type you have here to like a future object basically because you know we're, we're hitting um, Gemini client so it should be a it should be a um, a future object for to, to wait for um, so yeah that's pretty much it um, the reason why this is cool is because you can now you have all this metadata about like what happened when so you can like go back you can you can allow user to like time travel snapshot 3 not use this draft but like generate in a different way that kind of stuff and use interrupt because it can broadcast through the entire network if you have like multiple processes waiting for your workflow to to be accomplished maybe your agent I wouldn't say you can build an agent using functional API but I don't know if I'll, I would do that I like the graph truck structure more than the functional structure when writing like agents I feel like 
at least for like edges and nodes, it makes more sense in my head. And you can you can draw uh, mermaid charts um, <laughs> using land graph. But yeah, so if you, if you want to go crazy and like create functions, I mean agents using functional API, feel free to do so. But this is just great for workflows. You get you have all these things, all, the, all these metadata. For example, if you're running your, if your workflow is like writing an essay or like a social post for the user, this user might be generating three or four different versions uh, sequentially. But you can allow user to like do time travel to version two and fork it. There's a there's a there's a thing in uh, in in LandGraph uh, called fork. Uh, forking which means you can go back to a snapshot and you can create a new timeline almost like a multiverse thing um yeah so you can do that um so yeah that's pretty much it like i'm honestly very excited about functional api um it makes it easier for me to like write things quickly as opposed to like you gotta create a graph, you gotta compile it, and all that stuff. No, you just uh, write functions. That's that's basically why I'm so excited about this. But yeah, so give it a try. Um, if it gets a little bit confusing, uh, it's probably just because of like the terminologies and conventions in LangGraph. Um, for example, I was a little bit tripped up by like snapshot versus like check pointers and stuff like that. Um, interrupt versus like why do we need interrupt? But it's basically metadata. Like you you want all this metadata getting passed around and broadcasted in a network because your agents or your programs can get complex. Um, for something like this, it's easy, but in a production environment, it could be complex. They could be in talking to different services. So yeah, give it a shot and uh, let me know what you think. Hey, if you like this video, um, there's another video that goes into depth about how this works in details. I mean like every single line of code and breaking down like the different uh, concepts, terminologies and stuff like that from LandGraph. Uh, I'll put that in the comments, but Check that out if you're interested.